أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who read and understand the book of Allah and may Allah make us of those who know and follow the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ahbaba Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ta'beeru al-Qur'ani an alaqati al-rajul bil-mar'a ta'beeru al-latif. The way the expression that the Qur'an uses in illustrating the relationship between man and woman is a beautiful one. It begins by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizing that we all come from the same origin. That we all are created from the same substance. A man is not superior to a woman, nor is a woman superior to a man on that basis. Secondly, the expectations of Allah from both of us are the same. Allah does not expect more from a man because he is a man and less from a woman because she is a woman. That is not the case. Five daily prayers on everybody. Fast Ramadan on everybody. Give zakah on everybody. Be good, everybody be good. And then the reward is also the same. No deed of yours shall go in vain. Be you a man or be you a woman, Allah rewards everybody equally. Allah does not play the game of preference that a man is better than a woman or a woman is better than a man. None of this is going on. And subhanAllah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent at a time that men were viewed as inherently good. And women were nothing. And that is why Umar al-Khattab used to say, كُنَّا نُعُدُّ النِّسَاءَ كُنَّا لَا نَحْسَبُ النِّسَاءَ شَيْءٍ قَبْلَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فَلَمَّا جَاءَ الْقُرْآنَ حَسِبْنَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ فَضَّلَ النِّسَاءَ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ He said that prior to the coming of, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we considered women as being nothing. He said, however, after the revelation of the Qur'an, he said, we were thinking that Allah prefers women over men. Because of the care, because of the talks that were taking place at that time, asserting the humanity and the equality and the sameness of men and women. What is even more beautiful than this is how Allah talks about our mission in this life. Men and women, Islam says, must have the same mission in life. Ta'amal ma'am. والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر. He said the believing men and the believing women are the allies and protectors of one another. They enjoy in that which is good and together they forbid that which is evil. The same mission. And Allah specifically points out that this is not the work of men only, but rather it is the work of both men and women, that their job is to establish justice. That their mission is to eradicate injustice. And in this, we are partners. However, sometimes, 
we lose vision of the teachings of Islam. And instead of us being the protectors of one another, we become the abusers of one another. And subhanallah, Islam says that a family is where people come in to find peace. Second, a level of peace and equality and tranquility that you do not find anywhere else but when you come to your family. But now what happens if the family becomes the source of anxiety to you? The family becomes the place where your life is disturbed. The family becomes not a place of justice, but the family becomes a place of great injustice. What happens at that point? In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ gives the example. And sharri rijal, man idha dakhala baytahu, sakat al natiq wa kaffa al lahib. He said the worst type of men are those whom they walk into their families, those who are talking become quiet. And those who are playing become still. And those who are visible, they become invisible. And then when that person leaves, everybody in the family is happy. Everybody in the family is happy. You have brothers and sisters who come in, say, I hate my family. I hate my family. One sister was introducing herself to another sister and she said, where is your father? And she said, my father, may Allah bless his soul, he passed few years back. And the sister looked at her and she said, I envy you, I wish my father would die. Because this man is doing nothing but bringing trouble into our family. When my father is around, it's like walking on eggshells, trying to break none, but we always manage to break many. Imagine you're walking on eggshells. So that's how we feel. Said so when he come in, it's just there is so much anxiety in the family. Do you know my brothers and my sisters, as parents, we control the temperature in your family. You control the temperature in your family. You come in and your presence is either going to make people very happy and couldn't wait for dad or mom to come home, or sometimes your presence would bring so much gloom and doom into that family. Where people do not look forward to you coming in, but they really look forward to you leaving. When people say, the only time that we can breathe is when dad leaves the house. The only time that we can be is when mom leaves the house. Because we're not bringing that peace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about. The idea of second, the idea of peace and love. And specifically, inshaAllah, in the few minutes that we have, we're going to be talking about domestic violence. And that is when family members are either being physically or verbally or emotionally or psychologically abusive of other members in the family. Because that happens sometimes. That people do this. To the people that they love, they would beat them. They would put them down. They would leave them emotionally starved. You know, starvation is not only about the lack of food and water. Sometimes people are emotionally starving. Because nothing is nice said in that family. There isn't enough love going on between the family members. So people are left to be emotionally starved. They don't get any love. So brothers and sisters, Islam is very clear about this. What can be and what cannot be done. So that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, the women came to him and they said, Prophet of Allah, the men are beating us. These men are beating us. Your followers are beating us. What does the Prophet ﷺ do? He takes an active role. He takes an active action. He comes to the people in the masjid. And he tells them, سَمِعْتُ أَنَّ بَعْضَكُمْ يَضْرِبُونَ أَزْوَاجَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكُمْ لَيْسُوا بِخِيَارِكُمْ He said, it came to my attention that some men beat their wives. And I am here to tell you, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, those kind of men, they are not the best amongst you. That they are not the best amongst you. So that is not something that a man would do. Especially a man who listens to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضِ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ 
That the believing men and the believing women are the protectors and the allies of one another. They together, they enjoin that which is just. How can we enjoin that which is just? In our own homes, we do not bring that justice. I think I've told you the story of the sister. She said that my husband and I were watching TV. And we were looking, you know, what's happening in Palestine. Said that there was this Zionist thug. And he took the butt of his rifle and he was beating on the head of an old woman. Said my husband was so moved that he started crying. Because of the ugliness of that scene. She said, I saw him and I started laughing. Why, why would you laugh? He said, the same man that is crying right now. Last week I was in the emergency room because he broke my rib when he kicked me. But now he sees that when somebody else is doing it, it's bringing tears into his eyes. But that same person is the person that just broke her rib last week. So we look into this and say, what is the problem? Some myth about domestic violence. Sometimes we think that this is so rare, it doesn't happen. The United Nations has a study where in it they say that over 40% of the women in the world are some sort of victims to domestic violence. Across all nations, South America, Australia, Europe, the Middle East, and North America, all over the place. It happens and it is very common. So it is not rare. In fact, it is said that in the US every 25 seconds a woman is being victimized. Either somebody is slapping her, kicking her, shoving, pushing, or spitting on her face. Every 25 seconds. Somebody will say, well, you know what? Yeah, but that's all Kafir stuff. Only the Kafirs do this. The Muslims don't do that. And that's another lie. That is another lie. We give ourselves a sense of a false moral superiority. When we say, oh, only non-Muslims do that, Muslims don't do that. No, Muslims do it. Ask any imam in any masjid, and they will tell you that most phone calls come from sisters who have just been beaten by her, by her husband. The other day I had a sister, she came to the masjid and she was bleeding. What happened? My husband did this to me. The man beat her up, and then he tells her, if you call 911, you'll be calling kafirs. But it's okay for him to beat her up. You listen to this and you say, what in the world is going on? Why do people do that? The other myth is, why doesn't she just leave? She must like it. Why doesn't she just leave? They say that in the US, the average is 18 to 25 years. It takes a woman who is in that type of a relationship 18 to 25 years to get out of that type of a relationship. Because sometimes people do it because of fear. Sometimes people do it because of family. We have sisters who come to the masjid and they can say, Sister, why don't you leave? He said, my parents clearly told me, do not leave. If you leave him, we are not taking you in. You just suck it up. Don't come to us. Or sometimes people say, you know what, our community is not very kind towards divorcees. A divorced woman in our community, people are not very kind to them. Nobody wants to be with them. People view them as second hand. People view them as, you know, they're not really people who are... So they say that we can't leave. Sometimes it may be financial dependency. I have nowhere else to go. So what do I do? Or sometimes, and this we hear a lot, I just lost my temper. I hit her because I lost my temper. I said, brother, when you get a traffic ticket, are you not angry? I said, yeah, I'm angry. I said, do you lose your temper when you're in front of that police officer? Well, you can certainly control your temper even if you do not believe, or you believe that you do not deserve the ticket, yet you still manage to control your anger. Well, why do you lose it? That is just a lousy excuse for people to hit somebody else. And that is not very manly. A man hitting a woman, it does not make any of us more of a man. In the hadith, the Prophet said, لا يكن أحدكم كالفحل يضرب زوجته بالنهار ثم ينام معها بالليل. He said, one of you should not be like a beast. 
He beats his wife during the day, and then he expects to sleep with her at night. He said, such a person is not a man. He said, such a person is a beast. You have to be an animal to be doing something like this. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, a Muslim does not do any of that stuff. A Muslim does not do it. A Muslim man does not do these things, my brothers and sisters. And more important is we as a Muslim community, like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did with his people, is that you come in and you see this social injustice, we're supposed to be speaking against it. We're supposed to come and say, look, we are Muslims, we don't do this. In fact, we are going to lead into stopping violence in homes against children and against husbands and against wives. We are here to stand up for people. But rather, we get so many calls from courts nowadays. At Access California, social service agency, the courts are calling left and right. Said people are mandated to counseling. Can we please bring them to you? Husbands and fathers and mothers losing their family members. Children being taken away because they've been beaten in their homes. Culture does not excuse it. People say, well, back home, that's how we did it. Well, back home is wrong. Back home is wrong. It's as simple as this. If this is how they do it back home, it does not bring any sanctity into it. It does not become muqaddasa. It does not become holy. It's wrong back home and it's wrong here. It's as simple as this. So brothers and sisters, what we need to be doing is, how can I bring more peace into my family? Ya Hababa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ta'ammalu ma'i. Fi qawli habibina wa nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khayrukum khayrukum li nisa'ihi. Listen to these beautiful words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, people, the best amongst you are those who are best to their wives. If you want to be a noble man, he said, be good to your wife. If you want to be an honorable man, a man of honor, said, be good to your wife. Well, what does it take in bringing that peace into our family? Very quickly, we call them the triple A. Not triple A, the car, the towing company, no. It's another triple A. Quickly, it is a matter of appreciation, affection, and attention. That's what will bring peace into our families. Appreciation, attention, and affection. It was said that when Fatima would walk in, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get up. He would kiss her forehead, and he would make her sit next to him. In public, O oh Prophet of Allah, whom do you love most? In one narration he said Aisha, in one narration he said Fatima. Attention, affection, and appreciation. People love to be praised. Our sisters love to be praised. Our brothers love to be praised. Your sons and your daughters, they love this. And subhanallah, they say that when people are emotionally starved, they look for love somewhere else. When your daughter and your son don't have enough love in the family, you know what happens? People want to be loved. So what do they do? They look for love somewhere else. And the very first person, that says anything that is remotely nice, remotely kind, they will capture them and they would captivate them. أحسن إلى الناس تستعبد قلوبهم فلطال ما استعبد الإنسان إحسانه. Said you do good to people. What happened? He said that you enslave their hearts. People willingly want to be around you. They want to be motivated by you. They're encouraged by you. So inshallah, let's bring peace into our families. Let us bring justice into our communities. And let us keep all the injustice and all this filth away from our community, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I say this word, and I pray for Allah to you, and I pray for you, and He is the Holy Spirit. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اقتفى. You know aside from this thing being un-Islamic and the hadith we are told ما ضرب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحدا بأده قط. He said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم 
never hit a person with his hand. Never. He said he did not hit a servant, nor did he hit a woman. That was not the behavior of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, people were so moved by this. قَلْ سَمِعْتُ أَنَّ النَّاسَ يَضْرِبُونَ زَوْجَاتِهِمْ أَلَا شُلَّتْ يَدِي قَبْلَ أَنْ أَضْرِبَ زَيْنَبَ زَوْجَتُهُ زَيْنَبَ so that I've heard that people hit their wives with their hands. May Allah paralyze my hand before my hand is extended to hit my wife. That is the kind of spirit that we want to bring in. That my goodness is going to be measured by how good I am to my family. Subhanallah. Islam requires goodness even at time of divorce. And you would think that divorce is the worst time to ask people to be good. Islam specifically points to divorce and says, it's at that time that you need to be good. فَإِمْسَاكٌ أَوْ تَسْرِحٌ بِإِحْسَانٌ He said, if you choose to hold on to this relationship, then do it with goodness. If you choose to let go of this relationship, then do it in an amicable, civilized way. That does not give you the right or her the right to be rude or to be this and to be that. It's not time for vengeance. It is un-Islamic. But also it's very illegal. It's not only illegal, but it can have some serious ramifications. We have people who come in for counseling and they're court mandated. A brother, he was in jail for over 60 days. He hit his daughter. She goes to school. What happened? She was crying and my father hit me. Police of uh, uh, teachers at school are mandated by law to call. So they called the police and they said, look, we have a child who's being hit by the parent. The teachers don't have to know about domestic violence. All they have to do is suspect it. And if a child comes and reports, they are mandated by law to call. She made the phone call. The police went to where the father was. They picked him up. 63 days he is in jail. The first year, he is not allowed to see his children or be around any other children. His wife, the mother, the police almost arrested her because she failed to protect the children as the father was beating them, as the father was beating them up. The mother only had monitored visitation. She could only see her children, she could only see them three hours a day. But the question is, where were the children? Where were they? If the father is in jail and the mother was told that she could not be around the children but for three hours a day, where were they? And who was raising them at that point? They give them to relatives who happen to be non-Muslims at that point. So this is serious, my brothers and sisters. And then finally, and this is something to remember, the impact that this has on your children. One of the worst things that you can do is hit a mother or hit a father in the presence of their child. That is just wicked. There is nothing manly or humane about this. Well, you're my father, but at the same time you're hitting my mom. I don't know, am I supposed to hate you or do I still have to love you? You confuse them so much and you mess them up emotionally and psychologically to such a point that it makes it very difficult for these children to have any normal life from there on. Please remember this. Children, attention pay to what you do, not what you say. Children, attention pay to what you do, not what you say. You can say all you want about being good and this, but children will only do what they see you do. That's what they do. They're children. They mimic, they copy, they imitate. So this is what is going to happen. So please, my brothers and sisters, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with a family, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all your families, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If Allah blessed you with a family, please take care of your family. And there is no better way of taking care of your family like giving them lots and lots of love. That is the most beautiful gift that we can extend to our wives, to our husbands, and to our children, is just letting them know that they are loved. That is very important. And treat them in such a way where people will not dread your presence, but they will miss it. They want to be around with you. They want you to be 
They want you to be with them. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us appreciate the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we would say that in our community, Alhamdulillah, we would say that the majority of people are good. And when we bring issues like this in Friday khutbah, a brother can ask or a sister can ask, look, I don't beat my wife, let be, I don't even raise my voice on my family. Why are you making me listen to something like this? Because that's what believers do. We come in and we can constructively be critical of one another and say, brother, that is really wrong. If you are a brother who happens to be hitting his wife today, please brother, stop. Wallahi, I beg you, please stop. In fact, go back to your family today and apologize and say, you know what, that behavior is not acceptable. If your children have seen it, apologize to them and say, what father or mother was doing is wrong and it is not acceptable. Can we please open a new page today? And then also we want to tell our sisters or our brothers, because some people are also abused, some men are abused in these relationships. If you happen to be that person, please call the Imam, please come to Access California, please reach out to our community. And what we want to do is that we want to make our masajid friendly, both to the abused and to the abusers. How so? Remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, He said, come to the aid of your brother, be they oppressed or be they the oppressors. They said, Messenger of Allah, we understand how we come to the aid of somebody who is oppressed. But how do we come to the aid of somebody who is the oppressor? The Prophet ﷺ said, you make them stop. That is how you help them. You make them stop. So if you are that person, we are here insha'Allah to extend an invitation and say, please stop. For your own good, for the good of your family, please stop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our families, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi farraj hamm al-mahmoomeen. Wa nafiz karb al-makroobeen. Wa aqdi al-dayna an al-madineen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi arham mawtana. Wa shfi mardana. Wa fukka asrana. Wa aafi mubtalana. واختم بالصالحات الباقيات آجالنا اللهم يا رب احفظ أولادنا بالإسلام يا رب احفظ زوجاتنا بالإسلام اللهم يا رب احفظنا بالإسلام اللهم يا رب اهدنا ويسر الهدى لنا واجعلنا هداة مهتدين غير ضالين ولا مضلين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة